aspects of developing individual defensive skills from the very beginning stages of posturing and movement training all the way through component and situational training where players are forced to use all their basic defensive skills to be successful. I hope you enjoy this tape or DVD and that it helps bring success to your team and program. Basic position for defense is based on being in an aggressive, neutral, ready position. By aggressive, I mean that the player is prepared to not only dig the hard-driven ball that is hit directly to them, but also to pursue any and all balls that are attacked or tipped and involve pursuit to the ball. Players must have a slightly split base just prior to contact, and from there move into a wide base position that involves loading the legs in a neutral position so the player can move the arms and feet to any position. The concept of loading is crucial since it allows the player to be stopped for only a split second but not be flat footed. The player's feet should be split just prior to ball contact and then on contact the feet should be in a wide base position ready to react and move to the ball. Notice how the arms are in a bent position in front of the body so they can move efficiently in any direction to react to the ball. The most commonly used footwork for volleyball that is used in the backcourt is the shuffle step. Here you see players warming up with a side-to-side -side and a short deep shuffle pattern. Here we see a box shuffle with the player changing directions and working in 90 degree angles. This is what we call the V and W Shuffle Series. Here we see the players going through a forward and backward as well as a lateral figure eight series. Notice the change of direction and how the lead leg changes back and forth. This is a great drill for all ages of players as a warm up and footwork training. Now we start to introduce basic fundamental movement patterns that occur on the court when moving out of the base defensive position backwards to prepare to play defense. The first pattern is a drop, split, and shuffle forward movement. Next we progress to the drop, load, and pursue technique that happens so often on a tipped or off-speed ball. Here we use the knee drop technique when the ball is attacked outside the midline and a single step is not good enough to get around the ball. Besides the knee drop, notice how the inside shoulder must drop to get the platform behind the ball to direct it back to the target. The skill of rolling seems to be quickly becoming a lost art for our sport. I still strongly believe that it is a crucial skill if teams and players are going to reach the highest levels of defensive skill. This is especially true when teaching young players who need to develop safe and effective ways to go to the floor when first learning to master defensive game situations. The key when teaching rolling is to learn to roll long and cover as much area as possible. Roll over the back rather than the neck and use the lead leg as a push-off leg rather than turning and falling. I equate a proper roll to something that resembles a dive onto the back to maximize the coverage and distance to the ball. Remember, the roll is used as a way to fall down after a hard pursuit to the ball or it can also be used if a player is off balance and must go to the floor. 
The side slide technique is different from the roll in a sense that it is a reactionary move usually used at base defense when the ball is coming very quickly and the player does not have time to move to the ball, but rather must react quickly to one side or the other. This move was perfected by the Japanese women in the 1980s and is now used all over the world at all levels. Collapse dig is used when the ball is attacked very low to the floor between the knees or just outside the midline. Notice how the players collapse under the ball and the elbows bend to form a platform close to the floor so the ball can be dug straight up in the air and not travel back over the net and become a free ball for the opponent. Pancake dig has become a popular move over the past few years for the ball that is tipped in front of the defender and is falling from a high point to the ground. Here you see the player move to the ball and place the hand under the ball flat on the floor and let the ball bounce off the top of the hand to be kept in play. In the wall series warm up we work with our young players on developing defensive posture and proper platform technique in different body positions. Here we want the players in a low, wide base position to strengthen the legs and hips and to reinforce proper platform. More than 50% of all defensive opportunities involve balls that are outside of a player's midline. Here we start to introduce the shoulder drop to develop the proper platform position to guide the ball back towards the target. Here we use the drop step in an alternate manner to increase the difficulty factor. This drill is used for cushioning purposes. Note how the elbows are locked but the shoulders are relaxed on ball contact to keep the ball from being dug over the net and back to the opponent. Here we practice the overhand digging technique. It is important that when digging the ball overhand, the fingers must be much tighter than when setting or overhand passing, and the hands must be pushed up on contact to keep the ball in the air to create a transition opportunity for your team. Natural progressions for teaching individual defense is to first teach the players to play defense with movement and slowly progress to other areas of defensive development. This only makes sense because at the junior high school and grade school level, most of the balls that are attacked are slow moving and require a player to pursue the ball rather than have the ball come right to them in a powerful manner. In this drill, players move from a very low position, lying on the ground, into a running position, moving forward and sideways. Notice on the lateral movement how the outside leg is thrown around the ball to line the platform back up to the target.
players become more skilled and the game gets a little faster, we start to teach the run shuffle concepts to bring the platform and feet in line with the ball, keep the player balanced, and also prevent the ball from being dug back over the net. This is a short deep drill where the player moves forward to cover the short tip and then turns and pursues the deep ball that is over the head and must be run down. These type of drills are great as warm-ups and also for volleyball specific conditioning. Here, two players alternate pursuing 10 balls and work to keep every ball in play as they move in all directions around the court. This is a very popular drill with the Chinese when training individual defense. Here we start to develop the foundation of team defense as the players move from a base position back and then pursue forward hard to cover the tipped or off speed ball. This drill has been the foundation of the Japanese junior high and high school training for the past 30 years. Players are taught communication, court balancing, and giving maximum effort on every ball. We usually do this drill for 15 to 21 good balls. Here we work on team defensive movement on the ball that simulates the quick set that is tipped from the middle of the court and also on the other quick attack positions.
This is a two-coach drill where players first play two balls with a shuffle step and then progress to a running pursuit of the second ball. We work on tip coverage from the coach with both the underhand and overhand techniques. Earlier we demonstrated the basic floor work skills of rolling, side slides, the collapse, and the pancake. In the following section we use these techniques in training drills.
Next three drills you will see we call recovery rolling and involve aggressive pursuit to the ball. We perform these drills from a low base position to encourage the players to stay very low when moving towards the ball. base defensive position, players react to the ball that is outside the midline and must be reacted to very quickly. Here we use a three position collapse technique with the ball being dug outside of each knee and also inside both knees at the midline. Here, players react to the tip or off-speed ball by using the pancake technique. The following drills are done with a partner and are designed to develop basic technique that includes proper platform angles, cushioning, and basic ball control. Also, many of the drills you see can be used as basic warm-up drills prior to more intense training. Here we see the players dropping back and then moving from a split to a wide base by using the loading technique that we discussed earlier.
the attacker adds a jump attack to change the angle of the ball and force the defensive player to cushion the ball on contact. This two contact drill forces the defender to control the first contact back to the attacker. This is a normal pepper drill that involves the three contacts we see when playing. Here we have added the jump attack to increase the difficulty factor. This pepper drill focuses on using the hands to control the ball. Here we see a variation of Pepper using three people to attack back and forth to each other. This drill is a reaction and control drill using only a single hand to play defense. Here the players move the ball back and forth to each other using one and two hands. This drill is an excellent drill to develop reaction and hand-eye coordination. Drills in this section will be controlled by a coach. The benefit of these types of drills is that the coach can control the situation and determine the difficulty and effort that each player must put forth to succeed.